Good evening. This is the uh, yeah, Ivan Tower uh, UFO Files. Today's date is uh, February the 5th, 2015. I am Ivan Tower. I am a clairvoyant psychic. I can usually I do psychic readings on and off. Um, mostly off. I've decided to use my power to connect to UFOs, and I've been connect contacted by several so recently through mostly dreams, which is why I don't do psychic readings on blog talk anymore, because from what I gather, they kind of steered me away from that, which is good, because I was getting kind of... anyway. Um, I want to tell you what happened recently. Yeah, I've had two dreams recently, and they, um, uh, I couldn't remember exact, I remember go, dreaming, it makes no sense. I remember dreaming them, but when I woke up, I don't remember what it was. I don't remember the details of anything. Um, it happened to me twice in a row. And I know there are UFO dreams. And, uh, recently I had a feeling of a uh, reptilian being friendly, reptilian standing to the right of me, and an Arcturian. If you don't know Arcturian, well, look it up. Eventually I'll have my information on imanteller.com about these different races, but we're not there yet. Uh, tonight, of course I forgot to ground before I did this, um, tonight we're talking about uh, the, An the Anunnaki in the history of Earth. Uh, let's see here. And what this is, all this is, is information to um, remember that the whole idea to move into fourth density is to be positive. I know and that's not easy, but the idea is to move your vibration into a higher into a fourth density vibration. Right now we're in the news, talk radio, many things that are negative bring you down to third density. I think I already covered this, but I'm going to cover it again. And uh, the whole idea is to surround yourself with white light, surround your mind with white light, and to move into fourth density. And I have not ground, I'm going to ground one second. Um, in previous episode, we only had three show, two shows so far. This is number three. This is this is just for information. So take it as you will. Remember, this is my point of view, and other beings have other points of view. So not necessarily am I wrong because I'm not necessarily channeling. I mean, having an alien take over my body and speak through me, I don't do that. At least not at this point. Um, have a different. I tap into their energy, and pretty much they talk to me, and I listen and type right down what they told me. Um, where we're going here is the creation of man. Of course, they're not telling me everything. I wrote everything down, but I'm going to give you the gist of it. From what I felt, isn't um, you're going to love this. Um, all right, just as for the Anunnaki, they were here. Earl, I wouldn't say they were here first. They weren't here first, but they came here as a territorial to take over, and uh, that's where you got the dinosaurs from. They're not reptilian. They are kind of reptilian, but they can be several things. Um, they're very advanced beings. They're not. They're scientists. They're not warriors. I'm gonna throw this out there right now. What I, I'm. Um, this just uh, from what I gather, Anunnaki created the Alpha Draconians. They didn't create all reptilian species. No, Alpha Draconians they created, from what I gather, as a warrior race to sort of be there to work for them to take over the universe. Take that as you will. Interesting though. As I said, information could be right, could be wrong. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It might, I don't know, maybe nothing's wrong. 
So anyway, Alpha Draconians, so let's put it that way, the founder of the founders of the Alpha Draconians kinda got and they, they weren't created on Earth, I don't think so. Alpha Draconians were not created on Earth, they were created on another planet. Um but from what I'm feeling is that Alpha, the Anunnaki created Alpha Draconians to help them. And of course they had their little scuffles and dad and kid didn't go too well. So they had a couple fights. <laughs> put that way. A conflict of interest is a good word to put there. Um, and this is another wild one. They put the, the Anagaki put the dinosaurs here just to territorial just to, from what I gathered to tell you who owns this place or at least you know trying to own this place something around those lines. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's true. I imagine there's more to it than that. I'm getting pieces of everything. They like to keep mystery, and that's another thing. They don't want everybody to know everything. Obviously. And even ETs, they don't know everything, what's going on. So they're not going to tell me. But anyway, let's take the information and put it and do as you wish with it. Um, Yeah, uh, the dinosaurs are created... From what I gather, they, the Anunnaki came here and did experiments, and they found the lizard is fascinating. I don't know if the lizard was here earlier. I'm pretty, I'm feeling that it was here on the Earth, you know, in the beginning, and they kind of did some manipulations and created the dinosaurs out of it. I know it sounds like fairy tale land. No, we've just start, we've just begun. Um, yeah, the Nordics were here in the beginning. The Nordics feel like they're definitely our founders, our human founders. I, as I say again, it's hard to get full. From what, um, from what it seems like there was a war on Earth, I think two or three wars. I'm feeling three big ones on who owns Earth. And during these times, the human human evolution happened. The humans were created, but they were manipulated also. And I can't remember exactly. I have in my notes about Anunnaki and the human race. Uh, the Anunnaki actually, they uh, manipulated the human body so they can control it. No. And we do have a reptilian brain, so... Anyway, so that's her little con. That's her little contribution. But anyway, so they can so they can take over our minds, basically that type of thing. Um. Okay, we're gonna jump around a little bit. We're gonna go into. Um, oh yeah, Atlantis. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Sumerians was the first civilization. After all the wars and all that, um, the only the Anunnaki was there. But the only ones that had the technology. They were gods, or however you want to call it. They were controlling the people. You know, just trying. You know, doing scientific work actually mostly. Um, where we uh, Atlantis, from what I gather, came from nowhere. Meaning that the, the Anunnaki didn't really pay attention to it. And it sort of blew up and it came to superpowers. Like, what is this? You know, they didn't see it coming. Because um, the, the, the Yanyel came here and gave, with permission, through the Galactic of Light, with permission gave the Atlanteans technology. Because that, you know, there, there, was part, there was one part of the Atlanteans that were very advanced, and they were, and they were third and fourth dimensional. There was other Atlanteans that were third dimension, but they were still of a light rate. You know, they were very positive, very, you know, they weren't like we are now, just like, you know, nuts. But they're a very kind race. So it made sense to give them technology to help them advance and move us to, you know, you know, become a part of the galactic universe and, you know, you know, everything is going to be just perfect, you know. And, uh, what, Obviously, the reptilians, not the Anunnaki, and the Andraconians, this is where they kind of, 
I'm pretty sure it's a drink. Uh, you know, it can't be. I think it was probably an Anunnaki. Eh, probably a combination of both. Anunnaki and Draconians both kind of slithered in and uh, made, you know. Yeah, it was, a, it was an Anunnaki. Once they saw the power of Atlantis and how they're the superpowers, like, what is this all about? Then they started manipulating in secret. And it, it, probably Alpha Draconians were definitely part of that. They're, anyway, you know, there's so many things to look at. It's hard to catch every detail. Anyway, what we're getting at is uh, the fall of Atlantis was, uh, there's a lot of sections to that. Basically, Anunnaki didn't want to have that happen again. For them not to be the power. They weren't the power. They were. But that was in the middle of the desert. You know, that was with the Sumerians. But, um... With, uh, Atlantis, it's like, no, this is not... You know, so basically in Egypt, they basically... Anunnaki pretty much moved in, in uh, Egypt. In secret, in secret, of course. There, are, there are definitely several races in Egypt. Several in Egypt. Now, why is a different? There, I don't know. I haven't got to that. Uh, the one definitely is after Atlantis went down. The feeling I got from the oh yeah, one thing about the pyramids in Giza. From what I gather, the technology of the pyramids was Martian. But the Martians didn't build the pyramids. That's what I'm not feeling it, let's put it that way. Um, the Lir the Lirans are there. That's the feline race, the alien race. And there's a dog race, oh, I forgot the name, or canine race. I forgot the name of there. I don't know if I ever knew their name. Anyway, there are several races there. But uh, Martian was there. Part of them. Some part of Martian was there. But their technology was being used to create the pyramid, pyramids. Obviously, there's one on Mars. Oh, wow, coincidence. Um, from what I felt, is that the Yanyel had something to do with the pyramids sort of making up for the destruction of Atlanta, for what happened in Atlantis. The pyramids, this is one part of it. There's several layers of the pyramids of what their capabilities were. From what I gather, it's something with the raising our vibration. It was a it was power. It was a a positive energy coming from that. Either raise our, raise our consciousness. I'm not exactly understanding the whole details of it, but it's a very spiritual, you know, area there. That was, from what I gather, something that the world's never seen before. It's like a, it's like a religious. I'm not exactly sure what it was. But anyway, it was a... Let me look at my notes real quick. Let me see here. It's not take me too long to find it. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're going to love this. Yeah, I thought this was crazy town already. Um, I'm not exactly sure. That I, forget, I might have written it down somewhere. But anyway, the energy of the pyramids. There's just a positive energy to move up to the fourth density. It may have been for the... Um, I'll, I'll look into this later. To um, For the dynasties, the emperors, to have higher power over their people. Um... It was some sort of. There was a lot going on there. Let's put it that way. You know, I was channel as I was channeling this. 
Egypt. Someone came through. Um, I saw the image of uh, Hillary, uh, Hillary Clinton. And from what I gather during... Uh, yes, yeah, this gets better and better. From what I gathered, she was a princess during Atlantis. And she's kind of like she is now. Nothing's changed there. She wasn't... Yeah, she was kind of wicked, to put it that way. I, I didn't see any positive bone in her body during that time period. Um, but she kept getting shunned by the men. So she was like a wicked witch. Like she is now. A very intelligent wicked witch... Without the po without the potions. Anyway, she was a bitch. But anyway, um, she was a uh, she had her own ideas like now. She was power hungry like now. Very manipulative, right? Like now, probably more worse now than she was. She was pretty bad back then. Anyway, during the falling times of Atlantis, she, the males kept pushing her around. Wouldn't give her you know any credit. She put ideas. They're true like crap. So, and she's beautiful too. Yeah, big difference now. So, in this life, now she's not so pretty. And anyway, we're going to go into, not going to get into that. Anyway, um, and it seems like nothing's changed. But now she's taking, she showed these men that she can make it on her own. She's a mean man, and she's independent, and she can kick ass. And she does. She's still pretty wicked, though. That's pretty, I mean, for a wicked woman, she's pretty impressive. I give her that. For accomplishments. Yeah, I mean, kid, female girls are being taught to be like her. Maybe not as evil, but you know what I mean? That came out of nowhere. And I'm pretty sure that's, anyway, I know it sounds like one to take Zell here, but that was fascinating. Yeah, I thought it was crazy. Yeah. I thought the beginning was nuts. As, you know, Martians and the pyramids and later day I'll go into the um into Mars. So anyway, that's pretty fascinating. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Um I'm channeling a reptilian during most of this. A positive reptilian. And we won't go into details of uh everything of Earth's history is just too much, and a lot of it's not really that relevant to us. Um, of course, there's other channelers that have probably done a better job in certain areas, but we all have something different to say. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go into the, the Nordics. Now, those are our founders. The Nordics are Palladian. They're a, a species of Palladian. Very advanced. Not arrogant, but very powerful. Maybe too powerful at times. They can be warrior if they want to be, but usually they're not. They're very peaceful. There's a part of them that can be, you know, can fight. Let's see here. Um, also known as blondes. I'm not sure if that's there might be different blondes, but you know, they're human like us, practically. A little bit different, but not by a whole lot. I think the yin yell are sort of not that much different either in some ways, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, they're not that much different. They're 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 very much similar in different ways. One thing about the Nordics. Now, I was gonna go into the history of them, didn't get there because a lot of stuff they don't want out there. I'm going to kind of stay mysterious. This like Anunnaki. Anunnaki definitely wants to stay on. Anunnaki does not want you to know a whole lot about them. I don't know if I mentioned this before. Yeah, when I first got into shows like this, I tapped into the Anunnaki's energy. And I was not expecting that. I said, when I heard on a YouTube video about Anunnaki still being around here, it's like, what are you talking about? So I tapped into it and I felt them and I felt how tall they were. They were tall. I wasn't sure how tall, but nine feet tall sounds about right. Pretty pretty impressive beings. But anyway, 
back to the Nordics. The Nordics are mysterious. Um, now, I was going to go into history of them, and I kind of got bumped into nowadays, into present time. Or, uh, okay, maybe not. They are part of Buddhism. I have that spelled wrong. Anyway, the Nordics are part of Buddhism and the positive side of all religions, all of them. They have a piece in all religions to keep them positive, to bring in, to light. You know, they, what they like is community. They don't, you know, they, I wouldn't say they don't like the religions. I'm saying that they like the community of religion. You know, brings people together, brings love, brings up the energy. And many religions do. You move up to a fourth density to an extent, you really do. Because it's part of the love. Because as the world is all crazy and just, you turn on the TV, it's all negative, 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 negative. But you go to your church or your synagogue, wherever, or your mosque. And you're around positive people. You're together. You're caring about each other. You're moving the vibration up. So that is the the Nordics, who are Palladian, have a part in that. See, there are founders that are always with us. Yeah, in secret, but they're always with us. And they do. I think they do show up to people every once in a while. They say, "I'm going." So that was. Oh, yeah, there's another thing about Buddhism is that they like, um, the Nordics like uh, mountains. They like being up high in the mountains. That's one of the reasons why they have a temple up in the mountains like that. One of the reasons. Because yeah. it's just heavenly. It's just away from all the negativity. And it certainly is. So the Nordics are part of the positivity of religions in general, all religions, because there's nothing about bringing people together. Uh, oh yeah, and they're also part of our space programs. Oh yeah, that was a good one. The Nordics are also part of our hippie, the hippie movement back in the 60s. So that gives you an idea of yeah, which makes a lot of sense. Of course, maybe the drugs and some of it got kind of dark, but, you know, in general, it was pretty light. <laughs> Trying to be, let's put it that way. And you have to admit, there wasn't a lot of negative during the hippie movement, but there was a lot of positive. Free love and all that, you know, the move that takes the, you know, get away from all the you know, negative and go to the positive. So there was a lot of positivity in, in the hippie nature. Here, I'm glad I wrote this stuff down because I can't remember all this. Especially when you have a lot going on in your mind. Oh, uh, let's see here. And the there's more I want to tap into. I'm getting picking something up about the Men in Black. I'm gonna go into that in a second. Cause something, something that's not in my notes either. Something about the Men in Black. I was. Yeah, I'm always going to bring up a Men in Black here and there in these videos, or in these audios, because I think it's kind of important to know what, kind of their point of view, what's going on. Okay, we're going to tap into that in a second. One thing other about the Nordics was that they were part of the invention of uh, the candle. Basically... I know it sounds like it might sound unbelievable, but the candle is part of the Nordics that are part of our founders. We want to bring light into your life. We they we are always they are always with us. Every time you light a candle, and candles you know rule the world, you know the universe of the world of this world. Candles are everywhere. There, that's part of the Nordic convention. You know that was to let you know we are here for you. We are the light. We are part of you. And that's beautiful. That really is beautiful. That's our founders are keeping us in the positive in these dark times. Um so uh they learned a lot they learned a lot about us. We went through it it's um 
there's a lot of layers to them. I'm not going to go into it. It's just, I'm getting little pieces. Um, that is very just, Norks are definitely our founders, but other races have kind of saw how interesting we were and sort of made their own contribution. Let's put it that way. So we're a being, we're of a race that's unusual. We've been through a lot of dark times probably the darkest we were definitely on our way to the light of course that is a long road ahead of us to move into fortensity but anyway it doesn't really matter um, one thing about moving into Fort density you attract the positive you don't just attract the positive, you attract the things that you need, not that what you want. The things that you need, the things, you know, food, water, you know, ho you know, clothing and et cetera, you know. Instead of things that you want once aren't always things that you need. Understand that. Okay. That was pretty interesting about the Nordics though. Like I said, there's several layers to them. And several channelers, they don't want certain things told. Anyway, every channeler speaks to a different crowd of people. So anyway, I'm going to ground. Okay. No. I guess I'm being monitored by the men in black is what I'm feeling. <laughs> um let's see here. Oh yeah, where oh I I came up, I thought about this earlier today about where they preside. Mostly under mostly mostly underground. Um, like office type underground areas. You wouldn't know you're underground in these places all across the world. Um, let's see. Yeah, Battle with the Greys. There's a, a species of Grey. That one I'm not too familiar with. There's a species of Grey that they have to kind of deal with. Even some reptilians that are kind of rebellious against the agenda. They all have agendas. Everybody has a different agenda. It's just... It makes you go nuts. To, I mean, it's just too much information. So certain... Certain... Um, that was another thing about the Anunnaki and the CIA. Anyway... Um, the Men in Black... Yeah, I feel like I'm being monitored. But anyway... Uh, Men in Black, underground usually. That's their hangout. I mean, that's that's why you don't see them anywhere. They're not going to see them anywhere. Uh, yeah, they're a mix of different races, actually. I want to say some of them actually been made in a laboratory. So they are human, but they're kind of not human. Some are some look very human, and some don't. And I got a feeling of eight. There's more than that, but I want to say eight usually. That might be the the eight that I feel are the ones at the top of the MIB list or shadow government, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the State Department. Oh, let's see, in parts of Washington. Yeah, they've been through the White House. State Department. State Department. There's a facility underground, I think that's where they do their business. Um, the Pentagon. Yes, but not very often. Sometimes. 
State Department's kind of their office area of some sort. Washington, they've been in the White House. Um, they've been all through Washington. They've been everywhere. Um, anytime you hear like an ET coming down to talk to a government official, many times the men in black are there to kind of supervise it, make sure that, you know, you, you know, you know the friendly ET is going to come down and say, da 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 you know, stop poisoning everybody, and they'll, say, okay, now run along. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no problem. Just get lost, you know. So many times the men in black are there to supervise it. Um, let's see here. In the desert in Nevada, some grays make appearances. How much? Okay, now that's deep. As for why, let's see here. I would say the exchange of technology for resources for the grays. Here we give you the technology now we want then I'll leave us alone for a while type of stuff. Something around those lines. I wanna go into detail like people so they can do experiments on humans. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I remember seeing on Project Camelot about, you know, a gray would show up to be like in the middle of a mountain or in a mountain or a crater or something like that in the desert. And all these military guys are here in a in a circle and a, in a UFO would land. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen as often as it used to. Every once in a while. Depends on what's going on. Everybody has their own agenda. It's always technology, though. But they're always advancing their technology. As I said before, their technology is more advanced than the Draconians. But as for the Draconians, their DNA is very. They're, you know, they can do DNA test, you know, manipulations. They're very advanced at that. Technology is very advanced, also. But that tells you how advanced the the Greys are. Just a step ahead. That's why the men in black use their their technology because they're always a step ahead. Yeah, grays are very manipulative in different ways. They're very backstabbing in some ways. They're very they're tricksters. They're very, not all, but a lot of them. Not the yin yang. Yin yang, they're different. That's a friendly group. Grays are the Zetas. Are the Z Okay. Now we're on air. Yeah, the Zetas are here. Maybe not as many as they used to be. They're still here, kind of. I'm gonna go into the Zetas later. That's too hard to tap in. That's 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 kinda of deep. Right now I'm going to the Men in Black. I wasn't expecting to go into this direction. Um now wait a minute. All right, let me ground this for a second. All right, I'm going to tell you. The feeling I'm getting is that uh, not all the time, but sometimes an uh, MIB agent will be a Secret Service agent for the president. Maybe... <sighs> reason unknown. Maybe to blend in, or to, for training purposes. It's kind of like being like a being an MIB agent undercover. You know, jeez. As I said, the Grays are they got their own agendas. Okay, I must go into this later. This is this is a whole other universe. <sighs> something with the White House, something they're kind of not sure exactly what they're doing. Anyway, 
Um, I wasn't expecting this um, this Men in Black uh, situation to come through. Yeah, the um, the men in black have a uh, they have been to Mars. We'll see Mars. Mars is an experiment right now. There's a lot going on over there. I'm not sure if this is right. Presidents have been there. I'm not sure if the current one has been there. Either, or maybe their memory has been blanked out. I don't. I don't think our current one's been there. But maybe presidents of other countries, presidents of some sort, have been there. Sort of blackmail. Send them over there. Show them what's going on and sort of manipulate them somehow. That was the other thing I had to think about the um, about the Illuminati being there, the top ones in Mars. Um, it's human uh, genetics are going on over there. It's a part of it on, on Mars. The human colonies. Sort of leave Earth type of thing. If Earth finally does demise and they need somewhere to go, it's territory disputes. The um, mantis is definitely there. Alpha draconians, different different reptilian races are there. Not just the uh, draconians aren't necessarily welcome there. They're kind of kicked out. They're not really strong there. And Anaki, yeah, I think the Anaki kind of keeps the Draconians out. As for why, is a good question. And it shows that the Anaki shows their real presence too. Um, there is a president type figure on Mars. This is a little bit bizarre. Of course, this whole thing is bizarre. Since I've heard about talked about Hillary Clinton, it's like I think I'm in crazy town. Um, I want to say that Obama has been to Mars, but doesn't know it. That makes any at all. It's part of manipulation, sort of some sort of manipulation they're working on, or cloning for that matter. Um, I'm not sure. That, one, that one's going to take me some time to understand. I don't get it. Let's see here. The human colonies on Mars are there for several reasons. There's different races of people. Many of them have alien DNA, not um majority of them do. I want to say all of them, but majority of them do. To create a super race. To create a uh, a advanced species race. Yeah, a better human. An Aryan race, in many cases, yes, for control, the workers. 
It's part of the agenda. As I said, several agendas, I can't read them all. That's right. They're human. They look human. Yeah, there's got yeah, there's definitely human they ET race. E. T. DNA in these humans. They do look human though, definitely. There is E. T. Uh, manipulation there. There are um, reptilians on Mars, but a different race. Several different races. Nice ones, actually. Not very. They're not horrible. No, they're different. White. White. White reptilian race. Yeah, that's too deep. Anaki is definitely I can't go into. Um another thing about Mars and the men in black. It's part of training. You go there to train, it's part of their the White House is almost like they're like a sleeper cell in the White House, sort of keeping ETs out. <laughs> that makes Kind of makes sense, actually. If there's a sighting, they kind of like, or any movement of ET, they kind of just kick them out. Yeah, which makes sense actually, because these are presidents don't know anything about these guys. So there's anybody that's like a you know, a, a six foot gray knocking on the window, you know, the MIB get there and get rid of them. Seriously. So that's why they're there. They're there to keep the ETs out. Because they will go. I, the Greys are definitely ones that will show up. There's several other races that want to make an appearance to say hello <sighs> as part of it. Yeah, there's always a malevolent race on every race. There's always a negative one, but you know, for the most part, majority of them are positive. That's the other thing about the Draconians is that. The, that that in the White House that I want to say the MIB wants to keep the president away from the Draconians as much as possible. To keep the president on one side and the Draconians on another, keep it all kind of quiet, which for the most part works. So yeah, there is a president MIB president and presence in the White House, two or three of them. At least. Of course, does the president know? No, I really doesn't really care. Um, oh, does Obama... That's a good question. Does, uh, does, the, uh, the, does Obama know about the ET presence? Um, kind of, but he's told not to ask questions. It's none of his business. So, because he's a public figure, and they don't want public figures knowing this stuff, just because there's ways of that, you know, they might talk later or something around those lines. You know, they're 80 years old and talking about, like, Jimmy Carr is talking, you know what I mean? The best they don't know is about it because they're a public figure. It's the only reason why they don't know. I don't think they could care less if they told them, but they don't want them to know because they're. The, the public doesn't need to know about this. They don't need a president that's going on the wall and just say, oh, by the way, I had a conversation with a, you know, a gray or a reptilian, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is to keep keep it quiet. So anyway, all right, that for me is enough. And uh, we'll have more, hopefully, and hopefully I can get people to I'm trying my best to get these audios out to people. I'm not having much luck right now, but hopefully it'll be useful to somebody. All right, this is Ivan Teller signing off. You go to IvanTeller.com to listen to the audio, and feel free to take this information and spread it around. I don't have a problem with that. That's that's the whole point of it. Okay, have a nice night.